Hey, Dario. Thanks for joining us today. As way of getting started, give us a little background on yourself. Yes, uh, I'm Dario. I'm from Germany, actually. I think you can hear it already. So uh, I work uh, worked in software sales for four years, started as an SDR and moved into the account executive role later on. Uh, and now I work at a cybersecurity company. What? Why'd you get into sales? Well, uh, actually, I, I was looking for a job with uh, high earning potential and low entry requirements. <laughs> you so found it. I did. Did you like it? Absolutely. No, I, I, had, I had some more thoughts about that. So I wanted to go into uh, management consulting when I was in university. But I was kind of old when I was um, when I were in university, and then uh, I, I was running out of money during during studies. And I figured, okay, I got to work right now. And I had some prior apprenticeship in IT and also commercial stuff. And I said, okay, yeah, software sales could be a good option here, and it can also do consulting in a way. But what was the motive to get into consulting? Or what was the desire? I think, I think there's two things. One, I like the analytical challenge. That was number one. And two, I like to communicate solutions yeah. or, or discuss solutions with people. And I had no idea how this kind of job market looked like before I got to university. So it was more like an abstract idea at that point. Yeah. And, and do you find sales having that same intellectual challenge? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's different. You don't move as much around in Excel but you're still solving business problems at the end of the day. Yeah. And what was that first year like in sales? Was it natural or was it a lot of uphill climbing? I would say uh, the first year as an SDR was tough. Yeah. For sure. And it was that work. That was not what I, I knew it would be that uh, would be uh, that way, but uh, that was tough. First year in sales because I did the SDR thing before was came very natural to me. Yeah. And was it cold calling, cold emailing, or did you have inbound leads to work off of or both? Yeah. Um, no, there were inbound, inbound leads, you know, you know, the marketing departments, yeah. right? So they, they were inbound. So yeah, it was a lot of cold calling. And I preferred uh, back then I started in 2017. I preferred the phone over email 90% of the time. Why is that? Um, so my target was usually to get six or seven qualified meetings a week That's a and lot. i knew if i i knew if i dial 50 times a day i can get them for sure and i don't have so you can book the meeting straight away so that was my idea behind it and also you can overcome kind of objections directly on the phone and you can't do that in an email for a more strategic approach i would incorporate today i incorporate email in my outreach yeah and yeah. do you have an an sdr that you work with now Yes, yes. So, and, and how do you coach them different than maybe the company does? Well, uh, yeah, I usually tell them to forget what the company says. <laughs> <laughs> that was my strategy. <laughs> I tell them, okay, well, so first of all, we get outreach off your list. You can do that, but when you work for me, we do it in a different way. So the, the number one thing I did for them was that I actually defined the targets. So I don't, didn't tell them here, I look, so this, those are my accounts. Those are the accounts that we don't have right now. This is white space. And I actually gave them like a structured approach to go get to it. And then they work it. If they can work it off, then they will do it. So that worked very well for me. And what was it like getting into an account executive role? Because how was it different than you perceived it to be? Mm, it was not that different, I have to say. So really? a lot easier, yes. right? No. Nah. No, it's not. It, I think it's different. It's a different kind different. of pain. So yeah. <laughs> as, an SD, as an SDR, you only sell on the outside. When you I get to the AE role, you start selling to the inside, which I think is the harder part of it. Yeah. And what excites you about it? What do you like about it? Yeah, first of all, the challenge. That, that is number one. I like, uh, I like it. it's uh, your, your outcome is or your income is measured by your outcomes. So I like that. You can overachieve and underachieve. In other jobs, you just get what you get. Right. No matter if you're good or not, then uh, you, have, it, you, you maybe get promoted someday, whatever. Um, I, I like to be uh, work independently. I think this is a, a big factor for me. 
and uh, it's also very important to help people. Yeah. And what do you feel is your strongest sales characteristic? Oh, yeah. No, so I, I was I was saying what, what my manager said. He said, "I'm a terrier." So persistent, tenacious. Is that? Yeah, yeah. I'm very consistent, and I'm very tenacious in my in my efforts. And well, how do you get that mindset? I, I think it's uh, so it's partly it has to be a natural thing, or there has to be a natural starting point at least, or desire. Let's 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 not call it. Let's say desire. I think everybody can adopt the mindset, and then it has to be fed. You have to have some success, yeah. And then then you get into the into the right mindset. I don't believe in um, in things you cannot do if you're a halfway decent human being and are halfway intelligent and most jobs, most of the jobs are doable. So if I understand that correctly, once you get a little bit success, you get hungry for more? For me, yes, absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And you start going after harder and harder deals or more marginal deals or bigger deals? No, I, I no, I don't. I don't want to to get hard deals. I want to. I want closable deals. Closable deals. No, but when I'm in accelerators, when I already overachieved, I'm even more motivated than on the other end. So, and that's weird because that's not weird. It's it's very natural. But a lot of managers don't understand that. Yeah, you know. I so know. they yeah. They, so they make the comp plan so it's near impossible to get into those accelerators yeah. instead of making it natural to get into the accelerators yes absolutely i think i think it's not the managers nowadays i think it's the finance departments uh, well i mean i don't think the finance department makes any decisions i think they clearly they, they see it's expensive yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right <laughs> because it is yeah, it but, is but it's expensive against revenue that would not be there exactly yeah 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 i see it i see it yeah and when you're working on a deal, other than tenaciousness, because you, you have to know what to be tenacious on, yeah. right? Because being tenacious on a deal that won't close is a waste of time. Yes, that happened to me. Yeah. How do you know the deals that are going to close? I think, I think it's two things. So one, there is uh, the, the, the whole industry is based on MedPick. And I think this gives you kind of a hint. I think it's one part. You're being analytical about it. Do you know your decision maker? Do you know who your champion is? Do you know the why? Why are they buying? Why is there pain? Why do they have a problem? I think that's one part. That's fear, but you could look that up at their website, probably. Right. <laughs> and then, and then, then there is the other part. You have to get a feeling for um, the level of engagement that the other party has in the interaction with you. For example, if people call me back on my cell, I know they're engaged. Yep. If they if they take one day, even if they're busy to answer an email, I know they're engaged. So if there are sometimes people are just busy. Well, that then it's your job to follow up, give them one more call, give them one more email. That's where the tenacity comes in. Don't feel rejected. Maybe they really they they have stuff to do, right? Um, but I think it's it's a mixture. One is the analytical part. And the other one is uh, getting the gut feel for the relationships that you have. Yeah, because I like the idea of having those little um, asset tests along yeah. the way. Because th those signals uh, really are telling of the level of interest. Yes. Because a lot of people just placate themselves thinking that, oh, they're just busy or on their vacation or they got other priorities, which can be true. But clearly, they're not taking the action, which it doesn't really matter why they're not doing it, right? Yes. All that matters is they're not doing it. And yes. not, am I interpreting that well? 100%. Yeah. So on the analytics side, give us some more uh, insight into that. What do you, when you look at your pipeline and you only have so many hours in a day, how do you prioritize your activity to make the most amount of money or the most outcome of it? Yes, I think that's a very interesting question. I have a lot of pipeline because I build a lot of pipeline. So I, I have a luxury problem because I trained the SDR. So I'm very, very happy about that right now in the middle of the year. But um, 
it, there is those opportunities where you have it, where we have the strongest business reason and a strong champion and i go after those 90 percent of my time we also have channel deals when the, there are partners they say we want to do it ourselves i say okay do it yourselves i go where i have most of my impact and then i go to the to the direct ones where i see the strongest for example in cyber security uh, there could be a regulation there could be an insurance problem or something and i go after those deals and then there are the very big deals and they they have a low probability to close but they um, have high expected value so let's say 400k acv deal with a let's say 50 percent chance to close is still worth 200k even it's a if it's a 10 percent chance it's still 40k so and that's better than a 90k uh, 90 percent chance deal with five or 10k yeah and when you assign that percentage what's going on in your head um as i said I, I always go back to the level of engagement of the customer yeah i will always go back to that so if so if there's a high level of engagement and no reason for it then i get suspicious i yeah. think okay yeah something is something's on here or they there is a high level of engagement in a meeting but zero engagement outside of meetings and then they send you kind of request forms and say hey can you please fill out this? Can you fill out that? Can you give me X, Y, Z asset numbers in another proposal and stuff like that? So we work those, but I try to spend as, as little time as possible with those kinds of deals because they kill your time. Yeah. And, and you came highly recommended to the show. What do you think motivated people to do that? Or what do they see in you that you think would separate you from most reps? I think the the most yeah the outstanding thing about me is that I'm ten uh, that I have the tenacity and the will because otherwise I wouldn't be in my seat today. I, I still could be an inside sales or an SDR. So there are those careers and there's a lot of them. So I think again the, the grit and the mindset is the biggest differentiator. And do you, do you see a lot of people losing that after they get out of the SDR role? Yes. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> how did why. you keep it what goes on in your mind to keep it are you do you have a goal is it just your personality is it something that you know you grew up with yeah uh i, I had this thing on your podcast where you said uh, that was one uh one episode where you said okay the best sales people don't like to lose and the second best sales people like to win i, I don't have that I, I want to maximize my personal outcome more than anything else. So I grew up in kind of uh, kind of poor situation. And uh, I told myself at some point in my life, never again. So I'm done with that. So I want to be successful. And that drives me every day. So what does money mean to you? Does it mean independence? Does it mean yes. autonomy? Okay. Yes, 100%. That is the most important part of it. Yeah. And I think that's the... Uh, is a key differentiator how people connect to that success yeah and and when it's primal like survival yeah it, it's so core and i think that's why like in the u.s immigrants tend to do so much better than residents because they, all the trouble they went through to come to the country was there was a reason whatever it was yeah and the persistence is so ingrained in them that they're just naturally going to do well. Yeah, I heard those stories. We also have them over here. Yeah, right. And and so you saw sales as the way to get there. As one way, yeah. 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 And what do you see other reps not doing on the skill side instead of just the mindset or the motivation side okay um i it think doesn't have to one, be anybody currently or just in general no 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 no. i think number one is prospecting yeah and i mean prospecting is not is not a cold calling only in almost every company you have some sort of an account set some people don't even sell the add-ons 
I've seen it over and over again. So um, that's number one. There is a lack of opportunity. Typically, there's a lack of opportunity and pipeline. Then there is uh, then is uh, absolute desperation to get the deals, the remaining stuff in the pipeline to close. And then there is within that desperation is a, a totally false commitment to the pipeline. They and people say, okay, yeah, this is going to close, and you see it one year later, and nothing else. <laughs> And that happened to me too, but something else closed in the meantime because I had the pipeline. So it wasn't a problem, but that's the that's point. I think those are the two biggest things, especially in uh, when you have a territory. Right. Uh, those are two things. That kind of delusion. And I remember telling one rep, I go, we're going to put a birthday candle on that account because it's been on the pipeline for over a year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I had this one. I had this one and I closed it. Yeah, and I think a lot yeah. of people yeah. kind of get comfortable or create their own comfort zone. So there's two ways. Number one is you clean up your Salesforce. Number two is you have it cleaned up in your head and know what's yes and what's not. So I I tend to be number two, but there is more in my head than in, in, on the uh, on the uh, death dashboards usually. So I, I know what's going on, the opportunities. Uh, but as I said, when the, when the panic comes at the end of the quarter and the pressure kicks in from the manager, I see it. It's over. It's happening over and over again. People um, they they tend to fo- to try to close stuff that can close, right? Instead of building new pipeline for the next quarter, and then the cycle repeats. <laughs> and do, do you behave differently at the end of the quarter than at the beginning of the quarter? No. Yeah. See, that's a, that's a key distinction because. The reps that play the roller coaster game, you know, first month of the quarter, they take their time off, they recover, the meetings, whatever. Then they start working the second month of the quarter. Then they panic the third month of the quarter. Yeah. So there is definitely a cycle in my uh, closing. That I, 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 I saw the last year and this year, and it's basically, and the year before, and it, there is a cycle. But it's always the same. So I always have the same, same. I don't have a little bit in January from Q4 and then, then nothing for, for half a year. So there, there's always something coming. And how do you keep that consistency? Do you have a particular structured day or routine that keeps you more even keeled versus roller coaster? Yeah, I think... I think I, I automated some stuff. For example, cold calling is something I, I do with the SDRs, calling my uh, accounts to get meetings uh, for add-ons or for um, new products is done by the SDR. So I don't have to worry about that. Or some reps are calling um, leads from trade fairs. I don't know why we have SDRs for that. So I, I see that over and over again, it happens. And uh, there is usually, I don't know. How, I don't know how you see that, but there's three or four things each day that you absolutely have to get done to move your key deals forward. It's not more. It's maybe one hour of work, two hours of work, and you have to focus on that to get that done. And everything else comes after that. And you so do that first. I do that first. Yeah. Yeah. Or I have a super bad day, and I do it, and I get caught up in customer success work and. Get distracted, whatever. But I do those core things, and after that, you're energized and you're a little more, a little more. You write one more email, one more call, yeah. and, and you seem very even keeled. How, yeah. how do you keep that? What mean you by what do you mean by even? Keeled? Even keeled um, <coughs> means well, keel is a boat, so it's more even oh, okay. Okay. like this all the yeah time. yeah okay yeah that's true I, that's i think that's just my basic personality is it you always yeah. been that way yes yeah so, and, since, and probably more 20s. analytical than emotional uh yes uh, yeah. i'm i i tend to be i tend to be more on the for, for sales rep so not not i'm not like i'm not like the uh data guys at my customers Right. Or the, the security guys, but for a sales rep, I'm more on the analytical end of the normal spectrum. I would agree with that. And what skill are you either working on or wish you had more of? I work on a lot of things. I think the 
I worked on communication skills actually. So I had a communication coach to become more easy in customer conversations. Yeah. I'm very results driven, which people tend to like. Say, so, okay, this is a process. We do A, B, C, D, and then you have a result at the end and can make a decision. And here we start, and that's how we get there. I'm very good at that. I try to get a little better in the in the more soft, softer sales skill side. And then also read a lot of books and heard your podcast and so on and so forth. And then I did also sales coaching. And what I'm working on right now is to uh, I think the most important thing I need to to get better as is getting more stakeholders and bigger accounts earlier. So level, leveling up to the sea level earlier to get the um, the budget approvals. Yeah, and is that interfered with deals getting closed? Where you get stuck with a champion who says, "No, I'll get it done. Don't talk to anybody else. I'm your man. I'm the decision maker. Don't worry." Okay, Let, let's say that happened. That's never and happened, once, though, right? It happened. I learned from that. Yeah, <laughs> and, I, and now now I now I will keep those deals with on the lower end of pipeline or give them to a partner. If a person really says, okay, you're stuck with me, I'm the decision maker. That is actually never true. Of course not, yeah. So it's, it's, it's just, so then oh. this is, no, it's no opportunity then. Yeah, because they think the recommendation's the decision. That's, yeah. that's a recommendation. A decision is an order. It's yeah. not a Ex recommendation. Yes, or exactly. your opinion. Yes. Yeah. See, now you have the inverse problem that most salespeople have, I think. You, you understand the process, and, but, and most sales reps are great with the rapport thing, but yeah. they don't know the analytics and the, the reasons why things are going to happen. I think, I, think I'm, I think I'm good with the rapport, but it, it happens over. So when people, for example, I have very good product knowledge at the moment. My current company. I've been there for two and a half years. I know the product. I had a customer call today. Customer said, "Yes, you know your stuff, your products." So this builds rapport because they know they can trust me on my products right now. So I'm very good on that. I said, just said okay, the, the softness in the communication that will get better in the future. Well, is that a German thing? Because German people tend to be absolutely, very, yeah, very absolutely, direct. absolutely. Yeah. It's a very German thing. I had some conversations inside my company as well because of that. Yeah. And what's your territory? What ge geography or vertical do you cover? Uh, I work the, um, the southwest of Germany and a bit of Switzerland. Okay. So more than one language? No, it's mostly German, some English. Yeah. <laughs> and is that hard? I mean, I, I can't imagine trying to sell in a different language. No, it's not. Because the, the companies I sell to, they have all the departments. There are international people. Some are from India, some are from UK, okay. some are from Switzerland, some are from Germany, and then no one speaks perfect English, and it's just fine. So. Yeah. And are there different dialects of German? Yes. Yeah. That is harder. That is way harder. For example, so I cannot sell in Switzerland without a partner. Yeah. No, that's way harder. So. Yeah. I have a lot of people in the course that sell into like Switzerland. So they have to have a, they have to do Google translate with all the emails and stuff. It's yeah, I get it. I, <laughs> talk about rapport. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a second level problem then. And what would you tell a, a first time rep, the first time SDR going into becoming a, an accountant exec, what, what would your advice be? Um, read books. Read books. Read books. Uh, but, but not just read them, but you got to do something with them, right? Yes, yes. Try, try one thing. So I think, I think the, the, the best idea is to try one thing. Yeah. For example, for one, one cold call line that you will do, uh, yeah. get, get, a, get a sales process. Don't, don't, don't think, think about your process, how you, how you run an opportunity. Yes. For example, if customers come around and say, hey, hi, we would like Send to have a proposal. Demo. Yeah. Send me a proposal. Exactly. Exactly. So learn to say no. So we're going to do discovery right now because guess what? That's our process. So I, I drive this right now. Um, that's, that's the number one thing I would uh, say to a new rep. And when they're one year into the role, I would say get coaching or book your program, whatever, because this will accelerate. Yes. <laughs> cool.
Cool. Hey, Dario, I appreciate your time today. Where can people go to connect and follow you? LinkedIn. Um, I'm a, a Dario Trambala. I'm easy to find. I work at Beyond Trust. So I also do personal coaching for mid-market reps. I have three slots left. So if you're interested in that, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn.